I believe in good news first and then bad news second. So what I'm going to show you is why I chose Unity over the UDK to teach you. But then I'm going to let you down a little bit in the fact that there's something missing out of the equation. So here's Unity, and I have my scene sort of done. Uh, I worked on a couple other things. I just wanted to get the ground in there, and I got the door done based upon the last assignment. You know, there's still the fire escape and the trash barrel. But you can see it's, it's a pretty nice little composition, you know, just for what it is, is just to show you different ways of mapping things. I also got that little part pill out there so you can walk around. And if I hit play, I should be able to take the little pill and then walk around the scene. You can see, maybe I should have a little bit more platform room. But again, for demonstrations, it's not too bad. If I wanted to add a little bit more room to it, what you could do is just add a plane, put it down here, and size it up some. That way the whole little portfolio piece looks like it's floating on top of this plane. And that way you don't fall off in the empty space. Alright, so the good news. Well, what if I wanted to show somebody this? Would I have to show them a picture? Well, no. This is where you go to get some web space and you can upload this onto a server. Let me illustrate. File, build settings, and I could choose web player. I could just head add current to it. And under player setting, I can go in here and state the company name, the game name. I can have a little icon for it. I could choose the resolution of the presentation piece. And I have other settings. So a lot of the stuff I wouldn't touch, but I would, you know, you could title it yours and you put a default icon out there. Uh, with the web player you'll see that there's not much to it when you actually build it. So let's go build and run. I have a directory out here called build and I'm going to select that as a folder. and this is Firefox and it launches it right in Firefox okay that's pretty freaking cool right so now you can see the game piece at its best well if you look at the folder structure here Here's build, here's web player, and I only have actually two files. So if I uploaded this file to the internet and this one, and name this one index, what happens is when anybody goes to that folder, it launches index and it launches the player. then anybody in the world can see what I did as far as a piece goes and anybody can play it. Now it could be a game or it could be just a portfolio piece. They would need to install the Unity player but it automatically launches that little thing it says do you want to install the Unity player and you hit yes and they can automatically see it. So there is one little glitch there. You gotta get the people to trust you in the fact that the Unity player isn't some kind of weird third plugin 
property that's going to turn their machine inside out. All right, now I said I was going to grant you the bad news last. This looks pretty good the way it is, but it looks very elementary in its design because it's missing depth. And what adds depth? Well, many things, resolution, depth of field, all those other things, but the one, number one key issue that is always uh, needed in the scene is shadows. So if you click on this light in my variation, which is the Unity Pro, you can go down here and choose soft shadows. And you can see shadows appear, and it gives it a huge amount of depth. You can also choose what kind of resolution you want for them and everything else. But it gets even better than that. If you click into window, you have light mapping. And just how I burnt the shadows into the actual texture itself, this is even better. Light mapping is independent of color. So in other words, this object has a texture map. Remember in Blender when I did that, oh I don't have the scene up anymore, but when I actually did it in Blender, it, it took the shadow and added it to the texture. This one, it doesn't do that. This is using light mapping technology. It's an independent texture altogether. So I'm going to choose like four items here and maybe five. I'll do this. No, I won't do that one. Yeah, I'll have to do that one. So these items right here. And I'll hit Bake Selected. Now this takes a couple minutes. And down below, you'll see a little meter that pops up. You'll also see that UV set on default 1 is incorrect. Light mapper needs a 0 to 1. Now, remember when I said going outside the 0 to 1 is bad, right? Well, this building actually does go outside the 0 to 1. And it'll illustrate why zero, going outside the 0 to 1 is bad. So the actual object itself, the overall, you know, like the front faces, that one stays in the 0 to 1. But the very top, the roof, that little, like, um, asphalt pattern, that's outside the zero to one. So we'll get to see what it really means to go outside the zero to one in a game engine. And it's really, you know, it's kind of, no, it is really bad. You know, students really don't get it too much until they actually see it. So the shadows up here on this object are not being represented in here at all. So these are maps and you'll see that there's a front and a back variation. So if I was to destroy the light, you can see that objects that have the texture built onto them are lit still. Look at this. These are objects that do not have the light burned into them. The forward light lights up the object the backlight shadows the object. You notice this one did not capture the shadow because I didn't have a texture applied to this object in itself. And on the back side, where once was this cool shadow, is none. Because this little area right here is going outside the zero to one. So you would have to keep the entire building on the zero to one in order for it to work. Or you can have those UVs inside the 0 to 1 and have them assigned to a different material. That's another option too. So you could stack the UVs. That way they're driving off another texture. There's a couple ways you could do that. I think I've illustrated that before though. So stacked UV. Just look up stacked UVs in my little uh, video tutorials there pretty neat. So let's kind of look at the build just for entertainment's sake, right? Let's undo the light killing.
and let's go to build settings build and run build select There we go, I'm running around, and now you can see the shadows. So that's the advantage, advantage of having Unity Pro. And if you look at the shadow information here, see how it's twitching when I move? Okay, but the shadow information here is not twitching. See, this, this is twitching, it's causing some weird shadows, some anomalies to show up, but the ground plane no twitching of any kind of shadows. That's the advantage of having the light burned into the actual objects is the fact that since they're not dynamic shadows, which these are dynamic because it's based upon where I'm at as a player, and static shadows, static shadows are not independent or not dependent upon where I'm looking. You can clearly see the difference between the two. All right, well, what does this mean? It means if I ever wanted to do the shadows, I'd have to do it a little bit different. So in the next video, I'm gonna illustrate that and what you can do as far as baking shadow information into the object as far as the whole overall building. It requires a lot of work, tons of work but it's very cool and it's a, a good way to um, circumvent uh, the ability not to have shadows within the Unity game engine. You can build them in Blender and then import them in. So I'll show you that next.